Hi guys and welcome to another video with me Shazad Sheikh aka the brown car guy and in this episode I thought it'd be a good opportunity to celebrate today 14th of August the 73rd Independence Day of Pakistan and in order to do that I thought the best way that I could do that pay tribute to the country is to look at what are the most significant and important cars to motorists and car enthusiasts in that country so I've picked 10 cars plus a bonus car I think you'll find this interesting let me know what you think of my choices anyway I have had a bit of help with that I'll get into it in a minute before we do that make sure you're subscribing to youtube.com forward slash Shazad Shake and make sure that you're following me on all the social media channels just search for hashtag brown car guy you can see it there on my hat search for me on Instagram Twitter and Facebook and of course subscribe to browncarguy.com cool let's get into this So like I said, to celebrate the 73rd Independence Day of Pakistan, I thought I'd pick the 10 most important cars to the motorists and enthusiast community in Pakistan. And in order to compile this list, I had some ideas of my own, but I thought I'd enlist the help of a few brown car guys buddies. And just to give them a shout out, thanks to Mosin Ikram, Muhammad Arsalan Bela, Shazad Majid, Shami Khuru, I hope I pronounced that correctly, Reza Adil, Ali Adil, Farooq Ahmed, Shahir Haki, a very dear friend, mine and Danish Ali yeah the YouTube famous YouTube comedian yeah he's a car guy too actually and uh, now so for those of you that are wondering Independence Day what's that about so this day 14 August in 1947 marks the day that the British finally said toodle pip to the Indian subcontinent and after some gentle persuasion uh, decided to leave well actually that's not true because they uh, finally left India as it was already formed then after partition the next day now you're asking what's partition. So before the British left, they facilitated, I think that's the kindest word I can use here, the politest word, the splitting up of the Indian subcontinent into two countries, India and Pakistan, and later a third was added, and that was Bangladesh. So uh, why was uh, India, India granted independence a day after? That's because the last Viceroy of India, uh, Lord Louis Mountbatten, he wanted to attend both Independence Day ceremonies. And um, so next day he would go and do it in India. And I guess that he wanted to extend that time a little bit, probably because his wife, Lady Mountbatten, had a little bit of a thing for Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru, or actually, did Lord Mountbatten have a thing for him? <laughs> you know what? I, I, I think that's a whole different story. Uh, probably best saved for a different time and a place. But look it up. It's quite interesting. There's lots of... Um shenanigans going on there anyway i will do something on india and cars tomorrow so stay tuned for that right so let's begin our countdown to the top 10 uh, pakistani cars at number 10 we have the toyota land cruiser rkr 70 series now this car is very popular with the army and the police there and of course with off-roaders the off-roading community there are some off-road rallies that take place the cholistan desert rally and stuff like that uh, of course the land cruiser is, is a legend the world over because it can go anywhere and survive anywhere and requires a minimal amount of maintenance and, and upkeep you just can't go wrong with a land cruiser so it makes sense that this has got to be one of the cars that features on this list number nine is the Suzuki Cultus now essentially this in its original probably more popularly known form was the Suzuki Swift rebadge as a Cultus although the latest generation in Pakistan I believe is a rebadge Celerio Suzuki Celerio which is what we would know in the rest of the world and the Meran uh, the sorry the uh, the Cultus was something that you moved up to after you'd had an Alto FX or Meran when you'd made a bit more money number eight talking about more money is the Mercedes 320 this is the original uh, original uh, e-class or the predecessor of the e-class and you know at the end of the day 
everybody of an Asian uh, persuasion kind of aspires to owning a Mercedes. And these things were absolutely indestructible tanks. You can see them in uh, very many parts of the third world uh, because they just soldier on, but they maintain their dignity and the grand aura. So if you made it in life, you wanted to tell the world by getting yourself a Mercedes. And this would be the one, but actually you could pick any Mercedes. Number seven, the Datsun 120Y. If you've ever been in an old uh, black and yellow taxi, I think particularly in, in Karachi then it was probably one of these you can keep them running with a bit of string and glue and, and they just keep going forever so they are incredibly popular and 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 there's lots of them there number uh, what are we up to now number six is the Volkswagen Beetle. Uh, this is affectionately known in Pakistan as the Foxy, which I think it derives from uh, the word Volkswagen, which was probably shortened to Voxy, and then they just pronounced it Foxy, and that's how it became. Anyway, it's kind of cool. Um, there is a huge amount of a cult following for this car. They still love to restore them and modify them, and they run them regularly today. Of course, Beetles are popular the world over, and it's great to see there's still so much love for the original bug. <laughs> At number five, the Honda Civic VTI. Now, particularly in the late 90s and early 2000s, getting a Civic VTI was a big step up in your status. Uh, but of course, the added bonus of this car was that it was actually dynamically really good, quite a sporty drive, and something of a performance saloon for that region, if you like. So it's still highly regarded today by the enthusiasts and, dare I say, street racer culture uh, in Pakistan. And of course, the Civic itself still remains a, a highly aspirational car to get into. Number four, the Suzuki Dabba or carry as you would know it. This is the tiny Suzuki minivan and Dabba because it's the Urdu word for box and it's basically a box and basically these cars, these vans would be used everywhere. They'd be used as a commercial van or for transporting your family or as a minibus, whatever. They're not the most spacious, they're not the most comfortable and they're certainly not the safest but heck, they really got people moving in the country so there's a lot of affection for this car. Number three, the Mitsubishi Pajero. At one point this was a must-have for feudal lords and politicians. You weren't really truly powerful until you had a Pajero with a bunch of guards in the back wielding Kalashnikov rivals as your bodyguards. Uh, that's, that's when you knew you were really somebody. That's when you had a Pajero or Shogun as it's known in some places. It's a bit passe now, it's a bit ancient, but at the time this would have been like the Mercedes G-Wagon of Pakistan. You, you'd really made it. Number two, the Toyota Corolla. This is the world's best-selling car. Uh, of course, and for good reason. They're very well made, very reliable, very robust. It's highly regarded and highly valued in Pakistan, but most loved of all are the last of the rear wheel drive versions of the Toyota Corolla, particularly the early 80s, the 81 and 82 Corolla is almost something of a legend and it's really highly sought after and collectible and they actually restore these in Pakistan. Number one, it had to be the Suzuki Meran Alto FX. That tiny little super mini is known as the boss and with good reason everybody has either owned one driven one or been in one of these in Pakistan I myself when I went there many many moons ago also drove one of these cars it will rust away and things will fall off but it will just keep going uh, and somehow it will accommodate a ton of people and admittedly it's actually a bit of a hoot to drive as well. They actually quite. This, it's like the Mini Cooper of that world. Now, it's not just Pakistan's most important car. It is so important to the Indian subcontinent. It's probably India's most important car, badge there as the Maruti instead of the Suzuki. It's probably a toss up between that and the Hindustan Ambassador. I'll do something on Indian cars tomorrow. Make sure that you're subscribing and hit notifications, all the rest of it on my social media, so that you don't miss anything. Now, I've got to give, before I go, I mean, we're talking about the most important and significant cars in Pakistani history. So I've got to give an honorable mention to the 1942 Rolls-Royce Silver Ghost. Now, this car is absolutely vital, particularly on a day like today, celebrating the Independence Day of the country, uh, because um, this was the car that the founder of Pakistan, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, rode in along with uh, Lord Mountbatten uh, to the Sindh Assembly Building on August the 14th, 1947, to formally announce the creation of Pakistan. So, this car was there right at the beginning. So really, you've got to say, well, there can't be any more important car than that for Pakistan, can there?
In fact, it wasn't actually Jinnah's car, as some people believe. It was actually owned by His Highness the Nawab of Bawalpur, and it was loaned to the fledgling Pakistani government, um, you know, for this uh, auspicious event uh, and this vicious uh, 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 official occasion. So it was put into the service of Jinnah for this use as his official car. Now, I actually met this very actual car in 2012 at the Kuwait concourse of elegance and these are my pictures actually and it was now owned by a classic car collector Karim Chapra. Amazingly the car had remained the property of the family of the Nawab of Barpur until 2003 and it had only done 7,000 miles about 11,000 kilometers from new at that time and Chapra uh, he bought the car in 2003 and painstakingly restored it to concourse level in Pakistan itself over a period of about 18 months. Uh, it gave a new upholstery, a new paint, uh, but largely the car was original. It still has its uh, original 7.4 litre, 48.6 horsepower, six cylinder engine with a four speed gearbox. And it still has its original number plate. You can probably verify that from the pictures, uh, which he actually has. Anyway, at the concourse, it won best in class, taking first place in the 1910 to 19 1930 category ahead of a 1929 Cord, which came second, and a 1929 Hupmobile, which took third, and that car also belonged to Chapra. What a legend that guy is. Anyway, so there you go. Those, I think, are the most important cars in the history of Pakistan and for Pakistani motorists and Pakistani enthusiasts. Let me know if I got them wrong, if I got the order wrong, if I mentioned the wrong cars, what you would have included, what you would have taken away. Put it all in the comments above, below, elsewhere. I'd love to get your feedback on this. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, and all the rest of it. Make sure you're subscribing to YouTube.com. Follow me on social media, search for hashtag browncarguy and subscribe to browncarguy.com. The full text of this is also on browncarguy.com. And if you enjoy my content, then think about possibly supporting me on patreon.com forward slash Shazad Sheikh. And there you'll find some exclusive content and maybe some goodies like this hat. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, like I said, like, share, subscribe, all the rest of it. And I'll catch you again in the next one.